Welcome to Rant On, uh, early bird edition. We're like an hour early. Justin, Justin time. <clears throat> uh, no, I'm an hour after Justin. That uh, is true. He's usually like five o'clock when he starts. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin stream the Luby stream. Oh Lord, gotta get the Luan special. Mm-hmm. Luan for one, it's Luan platter. Keep it right. Michigan. I mean, isn't it, isn't it technically still a special though? Right, but it's called the Luan Platter. I suppose. Mm, I no I'll, suppose. I'll I'll allow it. Also, it's the King of the Hill character. Oh yeah. Play play. Probably, I assume Brittany. named after Luby's Pretty Murphy. Mm, uh, yes. Mm, yeah. Rest in peace. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, no. what, what, Brittany Murphy or Luby's? Brittany, Brittany both. Mur- well, both, if we're being honest. <laughs> hey, the Luby's by me is still open. I think it's like, I think that one's still like a holdout of the original company. Yeah. Uh, well, because like I mean, they started, um, they started closing some Fed Records, though. Yeah, they won- the ones around us did. Because <clears throat> Fed Records is mid. Fuddruckers is um, mid? Yeah. Yeah, I never liked Fuddruckers. I liked it. I'm not I saying it was the I best burger did, in the yeah. world. I'm pretty sure I've been there with you. Have yeah. you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've been to Fuddruckers. I feel like I went to Fuddruckers with you. I think I think you all may have gone to Fuddruckers with each other. That doesn't sound I don't, legit. I don't recall going to Fuddruckers. Because here's with the you. thing. I wouldn't have chosen to go to Fuddruckers. No offense. Never. Yeah. Well, I don't. <laughs> I'm so confused because, like, I generally wouldn't have chosen to go to Fuddruckers either. Is this the Mandela effect? Why did I, I think you loved Fuddruckers? Like, it was your favorite. Oh, no. No, 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 no. 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 Doesn't somebody. I feel somebody I know. Fucking loves Fudder. It might be it might be like David or some weird bullshit take that he has. No, David, no, no. I guarantee you David fucking will hate will say he hates Fudder. I've made Maybe it clear. Maybe he doesn't hate it, but he'll say he hates it. I've made it clear what my favorite burger is. We had yes, a whole I discussion know. on this. I, I know what it is. I haven't been there in months. Because I got rid of the Heinz 57. We walked in there strike. and walked right back out the other day. Oh, uh, why? Too fucking crowded, and like one person working the counter. Crowded. Mine was mine place? was literally out the door. At at Red River. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was it all old people? Oh, of course. There it is. Yeah. Did you know the, there's one the second? Like, oh. And the second we walk, and the second we walk in there, this is loud ass is just yelling about the Supreme Court decision, and just like, <laughs> oh, we're gonna get. We're going to get killed by old white people. <laughs> Did you know there's another one of those that like has booze and like a full bar? Red River? Like, oh, yeah, that's it's pretty like cool. up north. Somewhere oh, like oh, Red yeah. River Cantina. I don't know. Sorry. Very Houston yeah. discussion there. Uh, my favorite fast food burger is none because I think they're all gross. Uh, you never had P. Terry's. Season. I haven't because fuck you, Austin Staples. <laughs> I did. I did try mighty fine while I was out there, and I thought it was pretty fucking good. Oh, sorry, hot dotty is decent, but they really don't count. Is that a fast? fast f- that's, that's not, not fast, fast food. food. You know, it's so fast you have to wait two hours for it. <laughs> I mean, I think that was the very first uh, place that had the uh, the vegan burger. Was it yeah, Beyond we went Meat there for Beyond? Or was it yeah, Beyond Meat beyond. or was it? Uh, what Incredible. was the other one? What is the other one? It's not uh, oh, Burger King has impossible. It. impossible. Thank you. The impossible. impossible. I think it's the impossible, impossible patty. But they got beyond. Uh, uh, Jeff had the impossible burger there. Yeah, um, it wasn't good according to you. No, like, I mean it wasn't it like cardboard. It wasn't. It wasn't mm-hmm. fantastic. But that was also when I was vegan back then. They had, I do recall. Uh, everybody has their phase. <laughs> I do. I recall eating it, and then immediately after going, I want to. I want an actual burger from here, just to like compare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Obviously, um, it was much it's, different. It's, I don't believe it's a hundred percent vegan, but if you ever are at Barnaby's, their hip seed burger <laughs> is fucking awesome. I just imagine your dog behind the grill. No, <laughs> not on the grill, behind the grill. He's working. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Um, we, uh, Julia gets the uh, the black bean burger there all the time. Oh, it's right. good. Yeah, it's good there. Yeah, we should have so, a food podcast. We are just talking oh, about. Oh, don't you fucking. Mm, we, should have a, we should have a food podcast. Mm, <laughs> you know, I, it was a dark time in my life. When that pizza podcast died, I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to fucking suggest anything anymore. <laughs> Fuck this place. I don't want to talk to the manager. And here we are. Apparently I was the manager. Um, it is the Beyond Patty at Hop Dotty, by the way. I just double checked. Okay, and, I, and, and most other places have the Impossible. Uh, which one is the one at Burger King? <coughs> the impossible, impossible Whopper. <coughs> Nothing. I, love, I love that they're like, here, we have this vegan option. It comes with cheese and mayonnaise. And it also <laughs> goes on a broiler yeah. that's just caked yeah. in mm-hmm. fucking disgusting yeah. old burger. It's the same, yeah. Exactly. Right. Nick, where were you when we had the where pizza podcast then? Oh, he's, like, I he listened, wasn't around. He's like, I listened to a food podcast and then, you know. Look it, look I can tell happens. you, you wouldn't. You want to know why? Because you didn't. <laughs> You want to know uh, who did? Like three people. Yeah. No, it was like one under the the cutoff. Oh, oh when that's right. Oh, I remember Back whenever that. I had standards. I remember and carry. that. Yeah. yeah, you're like, oh, this is gonna, one under, and then I think another podcast went on and stuff, I and I was like, tried wow. to keep the quality up, but then I stopped caring. Well, and that's why we do this podcast every other week now, and it's whatever the fuck we want to talk about. Um, speaking of which, welcome to reproductive rights or human rights. Oh you God. are, a, <laughs> we are doing uh charity streams pretty much for the next couple months up until extra life when we will change. <laughs> we switch to, to another charity. We should switch to another charity. Uh, if you haven't heard, I've been living under a rock Roe versus Wade got overturned and women's rights are now fucked. So, so your boners do... won't be fucked. Yeah, seriously. Um, maybe go get a vasectomy. Or I'm working on it. You know, maybe. Yep, same. It's time. Um, well, I'm proud of you guys. I want to. I want to be like a stormtrooper, just missing all the time. <laughs> or you know, I mean, it's just I don't know. It's been uh, it's been an interesting week to say the least. A lot of shit happened. Um, especially since our last podcast, uh, and it just kind of hits keep on coming. They they announced that they're going to be doing you know allowing the EPA to to not be able to regulate carbon emissions. So you know fossil fuels companies are going to do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, America is not the greatest country in the world and hasn't been for a long time. Anyways, Third world country with a Gucci belt. Mm. It's I true. like to say we're at least second world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean to say to say that we're third world is almost uh, an insult to third world countries. I was about to say the irony that like the the country we destroyed, Germany, is like now like one of the leaders in Europe, and Boris Johnson is somehow leading a world power. Kind of. Oh, you mean Trump two point oh. He yeah, British, British Trump. He survived another vote out attempt, and yeah, but so did Theresa May. And then six months later, she was out. True, but we tried so, to impeach Trump like three times, and he's finished. no. But what we did impeach Trump. It's just we didn't remove him from Twice. office. Twice. Exactly. Uh, John Voight, uh, Angelina Jolie's dad, has asked for uh, Biden to be impeached. Noted, noted actor John Voight, but mostly known as Angelina I, Jolie's dad. Yep, I <laughs> know John Voight from the first X Men movie. I, I know only John know Voight as Angelina Jolie's dad. I I only know John Voight from 
uh, the the lovely Nicolas Cage film National Treasure as Ben who, Gates. Who is he? In I'm that? not eighty, so I've he never was, seen that movie. He oh, was the he's dad. The dad. Whoa! Oh. What the fuck are you have against National Treasure, Jim? No, I've I've, I've never seen it. I'm so I'm oh, really against it. I love that I've film. It's, it. it's so good. Jim, I don't know if this is gonna sound like insulting or not, and I don't mean for it. But like, you do can... you like? Um. <laughs> Nick um, Nick's already going Jim. <laughs> do you like uh like the types of movies that are like figure out the puzzle before the person is on screen does? Wait, do you mean, do a, you, are do you you mean saying, like a, a thriller like or Saw, like National Treasure, like Angels and Demons, like Da Vinci um, Code, like I love those all, films. All those type of films. I've, never there's a mystery. Seen, I've only ever seen Saw. How many uh, saws have you have? I've seen two saws. Out of how many? There's like eight. I now, think there's right? nine. Yeah, and one of them has Chris Rock. Too many is the answer. Oh, sorry. That one's technically kind of a spinoff. Uh, I think it's called Spiral. I think if Nick is asking if yeah. I like Nicolas Cage, of course I do. Of course I do. No, I he's mean, just he's just I think he's probably just appalled that you haven't watched National Treasure. One of National I Treasure don't... was like hmm. his big like Let's put him back in the big budget movies. Like how that... John Travolta's was Pulp Fiction? N- no. Mm. What? What about Battlefield Earth? Are you, hold on, wait a minute. John Travolta was like an afterthought for he still years. Is. He for still is. years until right? he made Pulp Fiction, which got him back in as A-list. That's, a, that's like a known thing. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, well, I mean, he was in Look Who's Talking. Yeah, but that's it. He was like, it was a joke, like he considered a kids actor at that point, like a like a joke. He actor. was also in Phenomenon. That's after Pulp Fiction. Oh, it's not. Yes, it yes, is. It. Sorry, I misread it. <laughs> Woo, I read that as 84 instead of 94, 96. I don't know. I'm looking at his IMDB or Wikipedia. I was like, I don't remember any of these movies. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he was anything before Pulp Fiction. Grease? Saturday Night Fever? Grease? Welcome no, to okay. Clark? Okay. Urban that, that, okay. That TV Gre- show didn't do nothing. Yes. Grease, sure. In, but the, it's, it's in not... the late 70s, early 80s, he was the fucking biggest <clears throat> actor. You think so? Well, he was up there for sure. Oh, Urban Cowboy. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's what I said. Urban Cowboy. Wait, uh, Blowout. Blowout is the best I, John Travolta movie. Oh, I would I say so fucking much. I would say that every actor has their ebbs and flows. Oh sure. Because right. mm-hmm. I didn't what know happens John is had been acting that long. Right, mm-hmm. but they did. Welcome they basically Connor. they basically did a bunch of shit, and then they took a break for like four years, and then they're like, "All right, I need some more money, so I'm going to go back and do stuff again." And That's then they take Nick another yeah. they take another break. No, Nick, Nick Cage, Cage No, Nick Cage ran out of money so hard that he was <laughs> like, I need I need to do I need to make anything that I can just to make my fucking rent. Didn't his uh point. Tyrannosaurus skull or something get stolen? He his, no, his, he uh... he basically opted to return it to the country that it had originally ah. been stolen from. Mm-hmm. Because he was like, "Oh, I, I did not. I was not aware of the history before I purchased it." And then he also owned like a Superman one or something. He owned an Action Comics number one. Yeah, yeah. number one. Yeah. So I mean, and then all, and then afterwards, he's like, "You know what? I don't really like big budget films anymore." To be, I mean, and I get it. So he's just kind of like he's he's become an indie film person now. Oh, oh! Tell me that you don't. Okay, John Matthew. Y- yes. No. Yes. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me ask you if you know a director named Michael Sarnowski. I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for what? For his cool. I know the name. name. I, I can't tell you any movies by him. I'm not, I'm not good with directors. Okay, so he directed Pig. 
We say pig, P I G. Yeah, P I G. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. He also directed That's a the quiet place. Movie. He's okay, right. just because he's place. in indie movies doesn't mean he's it's like an indie actor. Well, I would not, say not no, all he no, no, does no. Is indie. He's he's pretty close to that point because the last major film franchise that he was a part of was The Croods. What the fuck is The Croods? Is that that animated one? Right. And then he did he did Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Wait, are we but, talking about <clears throat> the same guy? Yeah, it's still Nicolas Cage. Oh, Nick Cage. Oh. Oh, we're talking about director. No, but I mean, besides that, he's done Willy's Wonderland, Prisoners of the Ghostland, Jiu-Jitsu, Grand Isle, Primal, Kill Chain, Running with the Devil, Colorado. All of these things I would consider to be more indie, indie spectrum than anything else. I would say the Croods is not indie. And then let's see. No, the I agree. But like, you have to look at the sum of his work or rather the Ben Affleck did the same shit for a long time. He would do a bunch of bullshit 100%. that just made him feel good, but then he would yeah. do like the big blockbuster. Yeah. 100%. Nick Cage just does that times 10. Sure. But I would say like even um, the unbearable weight of massive talent, like I hate to say that that's kind of closer to indie than anything else. Let's look at its budget. Let, let's see. It's got it's got some big stars in it though. I think, Tiffany I, I, I think I think what I'm struggling with is when I think of of indie films, I just the type. It just the type of I think I I associate like what type of movie it is. Like I could never imagine, and I. I'm, and I'm admitting up front that I'm wrong about this. I know I'm wrong about this. Mm-hmm. I can never consider like an action movie an indie movie. Like, okay. I think there are, I think there are like B, like B movie, like B action movies. Just well, like there are B what do you, movies. What do you define as an indie movie then? Like when I think of like indie movies, I like the number one movie that comes to mind, and I don't even like this movie, is Boondock Saints. Ew. Again, or Clerks, or um, uh, El Mariachi. Uh, Hardcore Henry is indie. Consistent. That's what I was. That's what I was about to pull. Hardcore up for. Henry. Yeah. So that's an interesting. That's an interesting movie. And again, I'm. I know I'm wrong about this. So just please, I don't want anybody to get upset. <laughs> um, so wh- what I what I would consider it to be is is that you you can have a star in it. That's fine. Um, I consider it to be a movie that's made by maybe not someone who has really broken out into mainstream film before and like either they're the writer or they're the director of the film. So like this might it be in the other thing is, is that like Fox searchlight did um, basically was like the, the, the indie banner for Fox. Anything under but, Fox Searchlight would be considered indie. For the most part. Ah, uh, it's just I just because uh, <laughs> I feel like I feel like you can't be an indie studio if your parent company is fucking Fox. Well, but again, it's not it's not like the studio that's driving it or paying for it. These are the films that you would submit to film festivals and things like that. So it'd right. be kind of like sort of out there films, like little miss sunshine has Steve Carell, Greg Kinnear, I do Tony Collette. Sun- I mean, little miss sunshine, a ton. Has- yeah. Ton, right. Yeah. But that was released by Fox <laughs> searchlight. So real quick, was submitted to I, Sundance. I wanted to see, I wanted to see, um, Sundance. what the budget was for hardcore Henry. Um, Not much. And I so- well, it's $2 million, right? Yeah. Yeah. So here's what's fucked up. Little Miss Sunshine's budget was $8 million. That went to cast mostly, you think, right? Uh-huh. Oh, for okay. sure. Hardcore Henry, $2 million. And I I didn't consider Hardcore Henry an indie film. But then oh, right did. below it, right fucking below it, a, is a movie that I do consider an indie movie with and had a higher budget. 
What, what was it? Uh, it's a horror movie called Night Watch. Oh, is it? The it people had a also search for. Dollars. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember our Harker Henry being uh, advertised a lot on Rooster Teeth. I saw That's it in I... theaters with Nick and Jernet, I believe. I saw it in theaters with Julia, too. I didn't see it, because fuck it. That it's would give me fun. motion sickness. I don't think I'll ever I actually, watch it again. But... I have it on my shelf. Julia got me the, the Blu-ray as well. I think I'd rather just play the video game version of that. So, yeah, I, I get it. Um, I mean, I'm even going to say... There, <laughs> this might be a bit controversial. <clears throat> District Nine, such a good movie, is definitely got elements of being an indie film in it. Who made that? Oh, I think Blumhouse? District Nine is an indie film. Neil Neil Blomkamp. Let's say that um, again. Neil Blomkamp. <laughs> That's the thing with the sex and the toilet. <laughs> okay. Um, I do think that his follow-up Elysium is not. It was Elysium distributed is, by Sony. I thought Elysium sucked. I think Chappie sucks. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't see Chappie. Um, Hell yeah, Chappie. Was it I distributed by it. Sony or was it distributed by one of its spinoffs? Sony Pictures releasing international and then stir something for South Africa. It was also produced partially by TriStar. Which is Columbia. Yeah, okay. But again, I don't this know. Is, like, this is less it, indie than I thought it was. You no, know, sure. The budget was pretty high for it. And I guess that's kind of like, where do, you, where do you draw the line? Does it have to be, um, does it have to have a low budget in order for it to oh, be indie? I would. 30 million. Oh, shit. My, my thought is, is that you're giving money to an unknown talent to to direct and bring it to life and Fair it's enough. not and it's not broadcast like a big hollywood production and that's why like when i think of hardcore henry i mean i saw that in at cinemark you know in a big theater like that that's why i think i feel like that um well but, but i mean to be like, fair i saw district nine in a theater as well and yeah same yeah you're absolutely right and so, I'm, I'm too ignorant on, like, films. I know what movies I like, and I know what movies I do not like, but especially over the last several years, like I'd say the last three or four years, I've really fallen away from being, like, a fan of cinema. It's just not a medium that I, I really paid that much attention to anymore. I but agree I with you. you. Well, no, no. I, I agree with you. My the the willingness to go out there so there would be a time where i would just order a bunch of films from netflix yep and and just watch just whatever i could <laughs> just as much as i could i mean that's how that's how long ago this was right yeah. because back then netflix streaming was literally the most garbage streaming service out there it was i mean it wasn't even streaming at that point really i remember <laughs> i remember uh, my girlfriend really early on, um, way before I met my wife, the only way that the only thing that she had where she could watch streaming Netflix was her Wii. <laughs> oh yeah, but you had to put. And a disc she had, in. yeah, you had to put the disc in. <laughs> well, I mean, even PlayStation Three for a minute had that until they actually released an app. Really, oh, I didn't know that. Did yeah, you know there's a Gran 3. Turismo movie coming out. Yeah, this is by Neil Blomkamp. Yes, so Why? there's actually there's a bunch of Starring like Aaron Sony. Paul. Sony's doing a bunch of things. So they did the Last of Us show, but they're also doing a God of War show with Amazon. Bummer. Oh no! Uh, yeah, Bummer. I'm not jazzed about that. I just know they're gonna fuck it up somehow. I mean, aren't you already um, mad at them in general for not giving you your pre-order that you demand? So I wanted to talk about that, but before... Are, are you sending dick pics to Alana? Is it no, you? no, but I did want to talk about that. Um, Jim, yes. I know you wanted to talk about Nintendo Direct. I mean, 
Or or we told him he we want him. Or, to or we told him about Nintendo Direct. Yeah, we're forcing you to as the resident Nintendo That's expert. Fine. I actually after when I got when I got home today while I was cooking dinner, I watched it again, the direct again, and I I have one, two, three, four, five, six things that like about. <laughs> you have six thoughts, so let's do it in order. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Don't I don't give a shit. That's I don't. I Nick. tried. I even bought that game. I tried it. I just don't, it's. I don't like it. That's a Andrew Nick Justin Jam. I don't even think uh, they like it very much. <laughs> I mean, they at least play it, so we'll, we'll yeah. give it to them there. Uh, near Automata and near Automata. Yes, and I have I have an overarching thought because there is exception of like two things. I have an overarching theme here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it at the end. But cool. I mean, it's it's like the it's basically like collector's edition of near automata with all the dlc or even previously unreleased um you know costumes and yada 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 so if you've never played uh near uh automata and you don't have xbox game pass or a pc to play it on hell yeah play it on your switch is it automata or is it automata automata. i thought it was automata oh Uh, also, is this the game where the original like achievements for like PlayStation or something was like look up her skirt? I, I have no that. idea. Somebody can confirm that. Uh, next game, Lorelai and the Laser Eyes. Uh, yeah, it it that was the like side scroller, right? That's a very gym ass game. That's what um, that seems like to me. I, yeah, it. Uh, <laughs> this looks horrific and it has like very killer seven vibes for old people that recognize that name killer seven hey killer seven got a like a re-release recently uh super bomberman 2 hell it yeah is, by the way it is near uh it, there's an achievement called what are you doing yeah there <laughs> is. uh for those Yikes. of you that never played the first super bomberman it is actually pretty damn fun um, I personally wouldn't buy it because I don't really. Buy I do not. I, my Switch. Not my type of game. Yeah. Oh, party game. <laughs> Neither. <of them. laughs> oh man. All right. So one thing I actually gave a shit about: Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. Justin <laughs> like probably Justin. just yeah. came so hard. Justin. Uh. So it's like ten games in one, which is always cool. Uh. This was the form of Mega Man that I liked most, you know, turn-based, where I didn't have to time shit. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's cool that that's finally coming out. Uh, Pac-Man World Repack. Stop it. I'm doing jerk-off in motion right now. Uh, Jim, did you see Blunk? Uh, what, what, which one? It's a deer in black and white with a dog. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, I don't care. It looks cool. Looks cool, but I will never play it. I think uh, I'm, I think I'm be uh, either my, my tastes are changing or I'm I don't know. I think my tastes are changing in games. <laughs> there was a which game, is, which a is couple... the, you know, it's 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 my ADHD just coming to life right now. So <laughs> it was there was a uh, game a couple years ago with like a similar tone. I think it was called like Gris or Grease. Oh, Grease! Or... I love Grease. Grease is great. <laughs> that, that's what this game reminds me of. That uh, game, next, so that game, if you haven't played it, is I a, believe free on Ubisoft, Game Pass. So you'd be software, I think. It's dirt fucking cheap. Um, uh, Steam sale still going on, people. Fuck that. I ain't got no money. <laughs> uh, Return to Monkey Island was next, which, by the way, caused controversy. People talk so much shit about the art style that their creator says, "Well, I'm not just gonna, I'm not gonna show off anything anymore," and he will not oh, be showing oh, anymore. Oh. Yeah, uh, that's, Reese that's... currently is four dollars and twenty four cents. Uh, also, can you spell it? Because I know it's not spelled normal. D R I S. Yeah. That's... I also wanted to talk about that later on too. Oh, the Return of Monkey Island thing. Yep. Nobody gives um, a fuck. So, no, oh, oh, oh. that Continue. is actually one of my points. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, I love Monkey Island. Uh, of course. Uh, um. I think it's Revenge of Monkey Island is like is I think the best point and click adventure game that exists. Those types of games are kind of they've they've transitioned into 
games like The Quarry and Until Dawn and Firewatch and like those types of games. But this was kind of like where that that genre started with games like that, uh, with with the Monkey Island games, with uh, The Dig, um, The Curse of Monkey Island. Curse of Monkey Island is fucking awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, so I was excited until I was like, wait, this is art. I didn't hate it, but I definitely didn't love it. Hmm. Okay. So, th- was the original one a LucasArts joint? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes. LucasArts made the best point click adventure games. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What was the other company? Um, of Sierra? Sierra, yes. Which made, like, um, Full Throttle and games yeah. like that. Which eventually basically just became Devolver, if you think about it. Yes. Full uh, Throttle was... Oh, what's up? was on Xbox Game Pass for free. Ooh. Uh, next game in the roundup is the game of the show. Mario plus Rabbits is back. Oh. Which, I uh, don't know if you played uh, the original. It's an ARPG. <laughs> it's it's XCOM, but with Mario, but Mario and Rabbits. I'll play the yeah. shit out. No, I, I did don't not care. Play it. <laughs> I, no. If it was ever, if Nintendo like ever gave out shit for cheap, I would have probably bought it. Um. Next up was Little no, Noah. I think, I think digitally it was like the cheapest it got was like fifteen bucks. That's still too much. <laughs> uh, Little Noah. Oh I yeah, I, I I already forgot what it was. Uh, side scroller tales game from the look of it. Uh, let's see, Rail Grade, which is just Ticket to Ride, but on the Switch. I don't know if oh. it's more Ticket to Ride or Mini Metro. It's, it looks worse than all of those things. I mean, I agree with you. It looks very like PlayStation One graphics, but that's not to be surprised for the Switch. Uh, the Legend of Wright. W-R-I-G-H-T? Uh, I thought that... I literally don't even remember it. <laughs> it's it's the hand-drawn shit. Oh, yeah, I didn't care. Yeah, see, it doesn't matter. Uh, next game, Sonic Frontiers. That's a re-release from a Is Wii it? game, I believe. Uh, I believe. I know Sonic, I think. No, Sonic Frontier is their new one. It's the new one. Oh, okay. It's, it's their... Sonic, cool. Sonic Worlds is the old one, right? Yeah, so Sonic Frontier is, and it's not open world. From it, it the looks demos so they, open world. I know they, they they say the director came out and said no, it's open stage. What is what oh, he said? Okay. So basically, like you'll go into a stage and it's a small version that appears to be open worlds, it lies but it's you. not. I I don't know. Basically, people were. Um, uh, people are kind of <laughs> upset about it just because it was like not, uh, um, no, just like Breath of the Wild's like Sonic Edition is what right, they're comparing which it to. Which is a smart move for any company if you can do it, do it. <laughs> I suppose Nick said that was some just in confidence there, Jim. Uh, I did say it with you. Yeah, you're right. I did. Um, Next is Disney Dreamlight Valley, made by Game Off, so it's definitely going to be shit. Animal Crossing ripoff. Uh, live a live, live alive. Live. All right, this looks so, like Wild Little Arms. Live. Well, it predates Wild Arms. So Little Live uh, was a um, JRPG that is pre- pretty much the inspiration for like Octopath Traveler. Um, there are a bunch of different storylines that all kind of come together. Um, and then once you beat all of them, you get like the secret true hidden ending. Um, it never made it, uh, it never made it stateside. It, it only stayed in Japan. Um, there have been fan translations and patches and whatnot. And it's, I haven't ever completed it, but what I have played has, was phenomenal. Um, so this is it coming out on the switch. Uh, I cannot wait for it. There is a live demo of it right now. Um, it will let you play the first, I think, three whole stories. And uh, it That's will correct. allow you to... Uh, I, I think I'm just going to play Triangle Strategy instead. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Doraemon, the fucking cat anime yeah, thing. Yeah, it's all that. That's a game. Don't care. 
Uh, Minecraft Legends. <laughs> Ooh, uh, we still gotta play that Minecraft Dungeons. Uh, I don't know. I, I like oh, I think Minecraft. I downloaded that. Hell yeah. Uh, Dragon Quest Treasures. <sighs> no. And I love oh my Dragon god, Quest. they're already Super Saiyan Blue? Wow. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, the person that does the art for Dragon Quest, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, awesome. Same person. Yeah. Akira Toyama. I was about to say, mm-hmm. yeah, that sounds accurate. Uh, what's after this? Uh, that's No Man's Sky. What the fuck? Yeah, yep. no oh, it's going to be on it. It's a bunch of little things. Okay. Uh, no Man's Sky is coming out for Switch, which sounds horrible. Uh, Captain Velvet Meteor, the Jump Plus Directions. Jim, did you see this part? <laughs> yeah. What is this? I don't know what this is. It looks I, I truly don't know. And then I just saw the Aperture Labs logo up here, so I assume Portal One and Two are being re-released. Which, good. I'm those those. I'm glad that those are becoming more and more. I, I think those games are important, and it's already available. You can get it now. Oh, cool. Uh, confession: Never finished either of them. Finished uh, just the second one. I never. I never even played the first one. The second one was really good. I like, mean, like, yeah. Cave really good. there, yeah. It, um, um, the first one was more of, like, kind of a proof of concept, it felt like, and then the second one really, like, they put a story behind it and it actually made sense. Sort yeah, of. Ca- made Cave sense. Johnson and Moon Rocks and yeah. Slime, if I recall. Like, some kind of slime yeah. that, like, killed you slowly, or was it the Moon Rocks N- no. that killed you slowly? No, there was like orange and blue slime that made you either bounce, bounce or, or propel or something. Propel, yeah. Never played it, but I, I definitely listened to like the voice clips of uh, I almost said J. K. Rowling, but that's not J. K. right. J. K. Simmons. J. K. Simmons. J. K. Yeah. Rowling is Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Yeah. Huh? Harry Potter. And then, <laughs> then J. R. R. Tolkien. Uh, there's too many J's. Uh, Harvestella. Uh, another... I'm excited for that. It's, it's Harvest Animal Moon, Crossing. but with death. It's it's not Animal Crossing. Uh, not Animal Crossing. Har- Harvest huh? Moon. I have it's seen multiple. I have seen multiple sites call it. Do you an know Animal why? Crossing You've seen off. multiple sites say that it's an Animal Crossing ripoff. Because they're peasants. Because they're peasants, and I don't know what fucking Rune Factory is. It is a Rune Factory ripoff. <laughs> oh, so it's still a ripoff. Okay, got it's it. still a ripoff, oh, but it's okay, a Rune yeah, Factory yeah. ripoff. I thought you were about to be like, "This is the spiritual." Well, I do think to... I do, do think some of the combat looked pretty cool. Um, I mean, it's it's I it, it, I'm just gonna play Rune Factory Five, which just yeah. came out for the Switch. And <laughs> finally, you're welcome, Andrew. Persona <laughs> He's three about this. I know Persona Three, Four, and Five. I mean, awesome, especially Persona Three Portable. Great. Uh, if Persona you don't have three, if you don't have a, is that the one that matters to you? That's well, that's that's my favorite Persona game. But is it? The oh, game? you okay? You were not a part of that discussion when Me? it happened, Todd. Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. Yeah, you right. you came in much later. We had a whole thing mm-hmm. about that fucking game. Oh, <laughs> I just was... remember the 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 fervor whenever. Um, uh, Persona 4 Golden was announced for PC. Not the not the recent one. Whenever it's coming to Game Pass, it's already on PC. So, hence uh, Andrew playing it on his streams on Tuesday. If you all want to know about why the the game is apparently Jim's favorite, listen to the last podcast. What was it called? Uh, the two hour and 40 minute podcast. I think it was E3 <laughs> is dead. Long live E3. Yeah. I E3. Think. Yes, you're correct. We have, you, you do that. You do that particular thing a lot. Um, the blank is dead. Long live blank. So that's how I was easily able to remember it. Um, um Oh, Oh, here's that's the thing. Interesting. Uh, it, it's, and this is this kind of sums up a lot of what Nintendo does. Yeah. And I'm I'm starting to and I'm starting to. Y'all probably already know this. Y'all all probably already know this. No. 
but it has it has first party games it has new games it has third party games there are a lot of a, a lot of original titles i would say more original titles out for the switch than anything except pc and right. that's why and that's why and i think that's why it's it's a very important system because not everybody has a pc has the ability to have a pc has the ability to build a pc and now they can play games like persona now they can play games like monkey island and they can go to and play uh, you know live alive and at, for pretty cheap 300 bucks so the only thing i'm concerned about is is that eventually they're gonna have to come out with some better hardware to really bridge the gap why to this next generation why because because eventually like they're already having games that have to run cloud-based on that system but are those games those are those are all if, third if party, you think though. about if you think about the yes games, number one yes but also think about those games think about okay. the switch's core audience the Switch's core audience are not playing those games. Well, I would disagree with you, though, because why else would they be bringing it to the Switch? Because Japan. What, I, what I'm trying I... to say is, Jim, is not that it's 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 not like Nintendo has to, but because of the age that it's at now, if they are going to continue this momentum eventually they're going to have to release like a Nintendo Switch 2 with something more powerful. Electric Boogaloo? Nintendo Switch U. Don't. Oh, <laughs> don't. Would you, would you like to know some of the cloud games for the Switch? Go for it. There sure. is, first of all, there's not, from the look of it, there's not a single Nintendo first party game. Yeah, I don't, I don't which, think they Which I wouldn't do doubt. The first one that I knew of was Resident Evil 7. Uh-huh. Yep. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Fantasy Star Online 2. Only that's only available in Japan though. Right. There's uh, no fucking way that game could run cloud in uh, the United So States. far, the first three that I've mentioned are only in Japan. Uh oh, I thought Odyssey was here. Oh, uh, it might be now, but I don't okay. know. When was this written? Uh in March. Uh Control Ultimate Edition. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hitman 3. Mm-hmm. A Plague Tale was just announced. A... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, that's fine. This was just written in March, so a couple months ago. Well, no, uh, one one game was announced for cloud at this direct that just happened. It was probably the Plague Tale one at the end. I oh the yeah that that is being pushed like crazy. It on, was like, on the Steam Xbox Steam conference. And go, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, Plague Tale but, Innocence is already a cloud version. Forgotten City. I think that game is. I think that game will be on Game Pass too. Yeah, uh, Marvel's nice. Guardian of the Galaxy was a cloud version. Uh, Kingdom on the Hearts. Switch? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Kingdom that. Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 remix. And here we go again. Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue, and then Kingdom Hearts 3 or all three cloud versions. Edge of Eternity, Dying Light 2. And a Plague Tale I knew Requiem. That was coming in. And a Plague Tale Requiem. Those are all the cloud. Tale, you're, you were right. A Plague Tale Requiem, it, the cloud version, is going to be on the Switch. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm not saying like in the next year, but well, maybe I don't know at this point. But <laughs> I, I don't mean, think like, so. It's just one of those things where eventually they're going to have to do something because the it just won't be powerful enough to run newer third party games. Which how. Which which I would argue was the death knell for Nintendo Wii U. No, uh, yeah, Bad Games and, was the death knell for... But you also got to keep it. Was mind. it Bad Games, though? Because there's a yeah. bunch of games that they put oh, to the Switch. Game. Sorry, uh, bad, um, bad third-party games. That's, bad, but that's what I'm saying. Bad just not cared about third-party games. Right. Yeah. So, But eventually what I'm saying is, is that the third-party support is going to dwindle Ooh. At some point, at some point, when they start losing money, they ain't losing money on the Switch, man. How many years into the cycle uh, for the Switch are we? 
We are like four, five and a half, maybe six years. Do you think it can stand another three? So yes, I do. And for for what types of games it's focusing on, plus just the seeming it's it's becoming the second life console. It's where games that came out on lesser popular hardware like PC. No, I, and not no offense to PC, oh. but like <laughs> less popular, less popular, <laughs> and like Vita and the PSP and franchises that like have got garnered cult followings now. Um, it's it's like the second life machine for all those games, Danganronpa series. You know all these all these like RPGs that became lost to obscurity because if oh I want to I you know most people are like oh. The Vita sounds awesome in 2022. I want to get one. Okay, let me go spend a hundred dollars on it. Oh, let me get a copy of uh, Ease Eight on the Vita. Oh, it's four hundred dollars. Now you have an option. You, you kill me with those Ease games. <laughs> kill me, Seth. I'm, I'm just awesome. I'm just saying that there's going to have to be something new at some point. I'm not saying oh, that yeah. they're not going to. It's going to be. It's going to be in the next. Two to three years, like to to keep the original switch on, like keep to keep it going. I can see, but eventually it's going to be um, like the Nintendo DS, and then they went eventually to the Nintendo. I think 3DS. it was the 3DS was like the last one, right? Well, so there was the there was, there was the new. 3DS. I was about to say the new 3DS. Yeah. And I don't remember if there was a huge gap, but there was eventually at one point they're saying like, "Hey, you have to have this system." But for in only order to... for there were very few games. So like, sure, um, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. No, yeah, Xenoblade, the, the first Xenoblade game, could only play on like the new Nintendo 3DS. Right there was yeah, a just... weird few games that. Uh... Did not work. I just, uh, I just, I'm getting the feeling that it's starting to, like, I get, I get the sales have been great, but remember the Wii sales were also amazing, and eventually mm-hmm. they had to come out with the fucking Wii U. Yep. Yeah. Wait. I'm because they, twenty. They but... <laughs> well, so hold, but hold on here. If we look at, so the original Wii lasted seven years uh-huh. before Wii U came out. Okay. So like I would I would hazard the, a guess. Is the, the ideal quote unquote lifespan of hardware. Mm. Where am I wrong? I don't, I don't know <laughs> about that. You're telling me I'm wrong? That fucking meme. Usually, it's been a five-year cycle. So I think also, it's I think it's I think it's five years. Then at year five, new console in development. Year seven release. I could have swore also the Wii did not get popular until like year three. Oh, dude, are you kidding me? You weren't working at retail. I was. No, I was. That's the that's the weird thing. Like it I took, worked at I worked at Game Crazy though. I didn't it work took at a full real year. For us to have stable stock. Right. We had every single weekend, we had people lined up trying to get one. Right. But I thought that wasn't the launch year of the. the Oh my God. Yes. Oh. Absolutely. God, I have to fucking use Microsoft Edge for this. Jeff made me spend $15 a month just for (laughs) fucking, fucking baseball. I, I was actually playing it last night. I, I actually enjoyed it. It was the first like uh, baseball game I played about? in a long time. We were compl- the show. Did you see yes? Oh my god, it's so fucking loud. <laughs> you got the <laughs> show? In my ear holes. So it's on Game Pass, <sighs> but it's not on PC. It's running on the cloud version of <sighs> Xbox. So it's on the you can Switch. run it. It's on. The, that's what I said. I'm pissed off that MLB The Show is on literally everything but the computer. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Shut up, Shohei. Otani. I don't like you. You play for the whatever they're called. He plays for the Angels. Well, I don't like him. 
Yeah, that's why I don't like him either, but he's good. Um. All right. Well, so I, you know, I guess that kind of wraps up the the Nintendo portion of our podcast. Yeah. Look, look. Um, like what you like, plays. There the are some things want, I wanted to talk about. You want, have fun. Were, don't be a dick. Uh, so, <laughs> God of War Ragnarok is mm-hmm. supposed to be still released this year, allegedly. Uh, uh, allegedly, yeah. Allegedly. So, yeah, shit ain't coming out this year. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, well, dude. <laughs> hold, hold on. Hold on. The last couple of days on Twitter have been a absolute oh, God, shit show. It's so good. I mean, so bad for, for Ragnarok. Al- so bad for Alana, but you know. So Corey Barlog is the director from the original um, God of War. So he directed 2018 God of War. He stepped down. Um, another guy named Eric Williams. He took over as director. Corey Barlog is still a producer on this one. Right. And it, I don't know exactly where it started, but there's basically a quote unquote insider named the snitch on Twitter who started teasing that maybe June 30th, which is today, the day that we're recording this, there would be some sort of announcement for God of War Ragnarok, the release date, the special editions, all that shit. And it has led to fucking... I don't want to say panic, but just like and the disco, <laughs> just the shittiest people um, screaming at Corey Barlog and a lot of Pierce. And what? there's actually another Jesus. there's an animation, not an animation director. Uh, I forget what she does, but basically she posted she had a post on there. She's like, look, I'm just letting you know that sending me dick pics is not a good tactic ever. In any case, but especially it's not going to get me to give you the fucking release date at this point. Right. Um, and like Corey Barlow, I got to come out and be like, y'all need to fucking chill. If I would tell you I could, but I obviously can't. Right. And it's just, it's led to this whole fucking circle of people are being like, well, it's going to get delayed and blah, blah, blah. He, who cares? Corey Barlow, I it, hope it, it, it hasn't now. been, <laughs> it, it hasn't been delayed according to him. So he he said it's not delayed. They just haven't had the opportunity to do an announcement yet that the way that they want to. I believe Corey. He seems like a cool dude. He, I mean, he is. If you haven't an opportunity to watch, um, I never Raising watched Kratos, that thing. Yeah. Oh, it was so good though. It was such a good documentary. Um, highly suggested if you haven't had an opportunity to watch it. Uh, and. Like, this is the thing, like, yeah, I'm excited for that game, but it's like the, the people feel like they're so entitled that they have to harass and scream and doom, doom. Just... this is America. Doom, doom. Don't go. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I love this song. It's just, it's just shitty, dude. It's like, you know, at this point they're like, you know what? We're not going to release it for another two years. We get good. Punish if they can make it go in 8K, I'm cool. I mean, I I it, I have always of the opinion, especially after Cyberpunk, especially after how many fucking delays we had. <laughs> that's, yeah, that should be the benchmark now. <laughs> and it was still horrible no when it was released. You guys. I mean, um, guys, product. I have to bid you adieu. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's Jim's midnight. He's got to go back to get you know pretty for. He has to um, protect vampires from their natural. <laughs> I don't remember the word. I, I just zoned out. Baseball's fun, you guys. Um, <laughs> it's working pretty well, isn't it? I mean, it's baseball, so I I don't think it's gonna have the like reflexes of uh, like a shooter. I'm going to try out no. a shooter later just to complain. Yeah. Uh, but in general, I think we're fine. <laughs> um, I I had nothing else to talk about. What else you got, Jeff? Or do we well, want to so end besides, it? I mean, besides the God of War Ragnarok thing, uh, you didn't be mention better. like... Just be yeah. better, people. Like, I get it. You might love a franchise. Like, mm-hmm. I jerked off at the fucking Shrine of Mass Effect for 
what is it now? Almost 20 years, like 15, 20 years. Yeah. And Andromeda literally was like, hey, everything you love is shit now. Yeah. And, and you know what? I had to sit on my ass knowing, knowing that a remake was eventually going to show up. But I still waited. Like, was I and antsy? Then, uh... Yeah. And then Bezos gave it away for free. That that pissed me off more than anything. <laughs> it's one of those things like every game that I like really like throw actual money into eventually fucks me over by going like dirt cheap within like three months. Like, but I yeah. expect that for like sports games. Like I usually buy NBA 2K insert number near launch. And then usually about a month after I buy it, it shows up on Steam for like 20 bucks. Or it's on Game Pass at some point. Yeah, it's really <laughs> annoying. But like, th- that's another part that fear infuriated me about the show. Like, I would pay for it. I almost bought a PS fucking 5 for it. <laughs> right. Like, I, I've gotten two invites to buy one. And both times I'm like, can I afford that? Maybe. Just to play MLB the fucking show. Because I I could care less about every other Sony first party game. I can't (laughs) think I can't think of another Sony first party game that I would that I would buy on launch. I mean you're not gonna play Boy and Dad Simulator twenty twenty two, so No or maybe twenty twenty three. I'll wait until it comes out on PC like seven years later, like the last one did. Well, <clears throat> on that note, I think we're going to end this a little bit early so that Jim may go to bed. Save the vampire! No, I'm not going to bed. What do you he's think going I'm going to, to bed? He's going to work. I got to do, do some work. Work? Oh! I've been, uh, I've been watching uh, a lot work. of code recently, so like, it's stuck <laughs> so in my good. head. I need to find a good rip of that, or like DVDs of it. I... Okay, I can't... I don't promise this. Huh? But I... I think I think, it, I think I have the DVD at my parents' house. All right. Because if, so, I, I, if I do, I, I'll just give it to you. Full disclosure. I tore into it like five years ago. Okay. But it's it's rips from TV. No. So like oh, no. mid-watching it, the feed from G4 TV will appear at the bottom. I was going to say, t- like, I watched that show on Fuse. It was on Fuse? I mean, it was, that's where, how I watched it. I was G4 yeah, but first. Wouldn't time. you... Wouldn't it actually be kind of cool to see? Yeah, but it's telling me about news from like 2012. And it's That's talking about awesome. Kevin, Kevin Pereira and Olivia Munn. And I'm like, that was the worst Wait, combination. No, hold, that hold, 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 hold the fuck up. Yeah. It's on, it's on Peacock. <gasps> I don't have Peacock. Oh, there you go. Oh, no, I have your Peacock. Ha ha! Yeah, dude, it is. Like all, gonna... all, all 26 episodes are on Peacock. Sounds like I'm going to be booting up OBS. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I never, re- you remember back in the day, like pirating like videos and stuff was hard. Like you had to have like uh, capture cards and shit or like two VCRs no. stacked on each other. So the very first time I watched Constantine, because I couldn't go to the theater to watch it. Um, because that was like in 2006. Constantine. <laughs> I want to say I literally downloaded that on um, LimeWire in four <laughs> in five parts. Oh my Ooh. god! Yep, yeah, I've done that. Because that's because that, that was the file size back then. I'm sorry, 2005. Ugh. So I had to download it in five parts, and it took eight days. Um. And I remember finally finishing it and booting it up and putting it all together. And I was like, this is, this is fucking great. These kids will never know our struggles. No, I mean, now it's like <laughs> I'm getting fiber installed on Saturday. I'm like, God damn. Uh, welcome, to, to work. welcome to about five years ago for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited. But you know what, it. Jeff? If I had a problem, I couldn't move. So. See, I was waiting for someone Thank to throw you that out for there. Thank you for listening and watching. And Son of a all bitch. That. We love you. Uh, Roe v. Wade <laughs> needs to come back or something similar. Uh, donate to the thing on the QR code on the screen or codify bit, it. 
bit.ly slash rm donate. Either one. We love you. Everyone was terrible. You all have a good night. Absolutely.